Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy. On Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to Inspired Conversations. Thank you for joining me and my guests for every episode that features soulful conversations that will inspire you on your path to intentional living. I'm your host, Linda Joy, Mindset Elevation Coach and publisher of the beloved Aspire Magazine, the premier inspirational digital magazine for women since 2006. You can grab your free subscription at subscribe to aspire.com. I got to tell you, my friend, you're in for a sacred conversation because today we are delving into the topic of empathy. We're going to be covering the gifts and challenges of being an empath and why empathy is a superpower and so much more. And this is a topic that I believe needs to be shouted from the rooftops. That's why I'm so excited that with me today is Dr. Judith Orloff, who has played such a pivotal role in my own spiritual and personal growth that it's such an honor to have her here. Dr. Orloff is a psychiatrist, an empath, and author of the brand new book, which I have in my hand, The Genius of Empathy. And the foreword was written by the Dalai Lama himself. In The Genius of Empathy, it offers powerful skills to tap into empathy as a daily healing practice in your life and in your relationships. She also wrote The Empath's Survival Guide and Thriving as an Empath. Dr. Orloff is a New York Times bestselling author and a UCLA clinical faculty member. She synthesizes the pearls of conventional medicine with cutting edge knowledge of intuition, energy, and spirituality. She specializes in treating highly sensitive people in her private practice. She has been everywhere. She's been featured on the Today Show, CNN, Oprah Magazine, and the New York Times. Uh, Judith, I am so glad to have you here with me today. Thank you. I'm very excited to be with you. Well, I got I to gotta ask you, my friend, the Dalai Lama. <laughs> so I got to know how that came about, because I know he's been a role model and someone that you look up to. And now he's written the foreword. That's right. He's he's my hero. He's a hero of mine. He's somebody, you know, for as, as long as I've been alive, that I look at him for inspiration. And he embodies empathy, given everything he's his his people and he has gone through with Tibet and um, dealing with life as he deals with it is a very beautiful being. He's a very beautiful being, and I feel honored to have him offer the foreword and um the way it came about was I just made the request you know I just sent it to his office and made the request and it, months and months went by and um I got an email from the one of his uh readers and said I think this is very promising <laughs> and then you know months went by again and then he sent the the lovely foreword on empathy because empathy means a lot to him you know, it's really empathy and compassion mean a lot to him. And so I'm just, you know, thrilled with the blessing he's bestowed on the genius of empathy. Well, such a beautiful energy to include in the book. And oh, I had to ask that question when I saw it. And as I said, I'm holding um, the book in my hands. And there's a paragraph that I just want to read. It's right at the beginning. It's in chapter one about be which is what's the genius of empathy becoming the best version of yourself. And it says, we are living in wild, sacred times. In this era of polarization, division, addiction, and scarcity, empathy is our key to so our survival. We are more isolated and lonely than ever. It all can rightfully seem like too much, and it is, at least, for your logical mind. 
That's where the genius of empathy comes in. It gives you a wiser, more loving inner resource to guide you and let you view difficulties with more empathic, discerning eyes. Judith, it's that last part. It gives you a wiser, more loving inner resource to guide you. It's within all of us. Am I correct? It is. And it's a beautiful trait that we can develop and explore and bring that energy to the world without absorbing all the angst of the world or other people. That's the big uh, practical takeaway from this book is how do you be empathic and get filled up with what I'm calling a healing energy. I believe that empathy is the source of healing because it comes from the heart and the heart is a source of healing energy. And so when we learn to tap into our empathy every day to make it part of your spiritual practice. Um, how could I be more empathic to myself? You know, which is sometimes a challenge. How can I be more empathic with my children or my spouse or my coworkers? You know, to be able to ask that question every day. But what the book will do is help you realize why it's so important to do that. And why it's so important as sensitive, loving, caring people to protect our energies, to take care of ourselves and be able to use empathy as much as we can to generate healing in our bodies, in our emotions, in our relationships, and to make a difference in the world. Isn't that what we all want? We want a world for our children and our grandchildren to feel safe and at home in. And yeah. I, have a, I, mean, I have this question because I know it comes up with a lot of my readers and clients. Some people get confused of what's the difference between empathy and compassion. And I know you cover that in the book, but I thought we'd bring it up on the interview because I think there's, there's a, a subtle difference between the two. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, there is a subtle difference. Empathy is your ability to feel what's going on in somebody else almost as if you're you're experiencing it as they experience it so it's a very intimate thing for instance if a, a, a somebody is that you're close with is going through um, the loss of a relationship and they're grieving you can feel the grief all right. But the trick is not absorbing the grief, but you feel it and you attune with it like a beautiful instrument, you know, a, a magical sacred instrument, your body attuning with another person's experience, which in itself is healing. When you attune like that, as long as you observe, don't absorb, which we could talk about too. Um, but compassion is more uh, a little bit more distant than that. Compassion is you feel with your heart and you want to help and you want to do something, and uh, it's very action-oriented, or you can send compassion to people, but you don't actually connect with them in, in their bodies in the same way. Empathy is a little bit more uh, kind of intimate, if that's possible. <laughs> Passion is pretty intimate, but empathy is more intimate. It's like, I feel what you're feeling, Linda, and my heart goes out to you right now. And compassion is, I have compassion for what you're feeling. It's not, I feel what you're feeling. I have compassion for what you're feeling, which is, you know, they both work together. It seems to be a distinction that people are interested in these days. So it's worth mentioning, um, but you want to do both. You know, you want to have empathy. But with empathy, I want to say there may be more practical tools you're going to need to develop so you don't absorb other people's stuff. You know, with compassion, you're less likely to absorb. And some people prefer staying with compassion. But for me, I'm such an empath and I love connection. And empathy lets you deeply connect to people. It's, it's a very beautiful, sacred connection to be able to feel along with somebody else rather than feel for. You feel along with them. It's, it's just a subtle difference, but you know, you might want to think about it and have both in your life and have both towards yourself. It's so beautiful. And I love how you describe it because for me, I feel deeply, but for many years, I was the absorber. Right. 
I would be like a weeping willow tree getting blown all over the place when anything happened to a loved one. I couldn't find my footing. I couldn't, um, I couldn't even understand what was happening to me. I'm like, what is happening? And then I just kept reading all your books and following you for decades. And I just kept going, why is this happening? So in that time when I was processing things that way, was it because I didn't have the tools to process my empathy in a healthy way? And I'm not sure that's the correct wording, but there's such a difference to where I am now as my empathic abilities than what, where I was 25 years ago. Is that because it's a skill set that we can learn? Oh, yes. I really believe that, that we need to be educated about how to use empathy. Otherwise, we just go into empathy fatigue because your heart, if you have a big heart, it goes out everywhere, you know, goes out. People you don't know, people you know, the world, the news, it's just everything is going all out versus this is not healthy for me to keep watching the news hour after hour. It's draining me. So I have to set a limit and set a boundary. Um, what I talk about in the book or how to set healthy boundaries and have loving detachment rather than jumping into somebody's skin and being them, which is what empaths can do. You know, especially if you love somebody, you just jump right into their suffering and as if that could help. And it, it's an instinct. No, I, I want to say, but it's an instinct that can be retrained. And it's very important. That doesn't make you less compassionate or less empathic. It's just a skill set you need to learn in order to have healthy empathy and have longevity with empathy and keep opening your heart and not being afraid of going outside because you're going to get overstimulated all the time. Mm, I just love, I love how you describe things because I can, I can feel into my body the deeper understanding. We're going to take our first break. And when we come back, I want to talk about how, as a psychiatrist, you combine your empathic skills with traditional science, because I've always been drawn to you for your ability to do that. So we'll be back in a moment, my friends. I'm with Dr. Judith Orloff. You can learn more at drjudithorloff.com. We'll be right back. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Inspiration for a woman's soul. Aspire Magazine, inspiring and supporting women on the path of self-discovery. Claim your free digital subscription today, which includes access to thousands of dollars of personal development bonus gifts from Team Inspiration Partners. Claim your Aspire Magazine subscription today at subscribetoaspire.com. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Consistently attract soulmate clients begin showing up on brand, monetizing on your calling. Welcome all spiritual coaches, leaders, healers, lightworkers, and practitioners to a show that turns you on in your business and amplifies your magnetism. I'm host, catalyst, and spiritual business coach, Rosalind Fung, and I'm here to journey with you into the juicy and help you discover where the real gaps are. Ignite your mindset and soul with strategies and systems as each episode takes you to the sweet spot that activates your soulgasmic business by tuning in on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Mountain. Join me for your light language activation and let's magnetize and monetize. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back, my friends. Thank you for listening in. With me today is Dr. Judith Orloff, and we're talking about her brand new book, The Genius of Empathy. One of the things that I've just always loved and respected about you, you have this, this beautiful skill set, your, your science as a psychiatrist, and 
you're highly empathic and you found this way to exist in both worlds and bring us, the reader, those who attend your webinars and all your other beautiful offerings, you have a way of getting the message to us that speaks to both those who are science-based minds and those who feel a little differently. Yes, yes, uh, I, I try to. I've always, you know, since I've be begun speaking in public like many years ago, um, I always wanted to bridge the gap between science and intuition and energy medicine. I always wanted to bring everything together. I never had a, a instinct to polarize at all, thank God. You know, and if somebody, and if one of my medical colleagues, let's say, does, is not interested in learning how to open their hearts in the way I teach it, God bless them. You know, I don't, I don't really care what, you know, if, as long as people are happy, you know, as long as their uh, path is leading them to a good place. But what I've found is that many people are attracted to being an empath and empathy and learning to develop this heart energy and develop healing skills that go beyond what's usually taught you know so you no know, with with science i have devoted a section in the genius of empathy to the neuroscience of empathy because i'm just intrigued by all the scientific findings that explain what occurs in your brain and your body when you're feeling healthy empathy versus overgiving so i talk i have a chapter on what's healthy giving and what's overgiving and what's being a martyr. Very important to know that. But the neuroscience, I talk about the mirror neuron system, that when you express empathy, your mirror neurons, or known as the compassion neurons, uh, go on overdrive for sensitive people. And they're just feeling everything, the compassion. And then the oxytocin and other happiness hormones get released when you're empathic. And these feel good. They boost your immunity and health and keep you youthful. And it's a blissful, warm, fuzzy uh, neurochemical of uh, bonding, of oxytocin is, is the, what mothers feel for their children or women feel for each other when they connect. And men can feel it too, but they have much less oxytocin in their system. Um, it's just a fact. Um, but they could still feel the bonding, but it, it's a oxytocin is a very special hormone and the, the endorphins, which get released with empathy. This is when you feel empathy, just my heart goes out to you, your endorphins get released. And these are natural painkillers and dopamine <laughs> gets released, which is the pleasure hormone when you experience empathy. And then serotonin also gets released, which is the natural antidepressant um that our bodies make and so all in all it's a really wise choice biologically to develop empathy on a regular basis and i love that your work brings that in so i had, want to talk about what some of the gifts and challenges of being an empath are i know what i experienced over the last 30 years trying to come back into myself because I used to be out there. I had unhealthy empathy at the cost to myself. So I'm curious for those who are just learning about empathy or that are listening, can you describe what some of those gifts and challenges are so they can kind of understand it on a on their level of understanding how it might be processing in their life? Yes, absolutely. Um... Being an empath means that you might not have the same filters that other people have when it comes to stress or emotions or what happens in the outside world. So you feel everything, you know, it just goes from out to in and that can cause some sensory overload. And that's true for highly sensitive people who are very, very sensitive uh, beings they're very sensitive beings light smell sound um too many people causes an overload sense and and that's true of empath as well um but one of the challenges of being an empath is that you may be an emotional sponge so you tend to absorb the energy of other people into your own body and it's a natural tendency to be a sponge whereas non-empaths don't do that okay so it's just important. Not everybody does that. 
like my partner is a non-empath. He definitely doesn't do that. <laughs> and I'm thrilled. <laughs> he balances analysis. you, right? He balances you. Yeah, balancing, grounding, grounding me because it's 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 spiritual exercise for me to be an empath. And I, I love it and I would never change it. And I love connection. Connection is another great plus of being an empath. If you like to connect, if you like love, if you're into loving, it's a great way to be loving people all the time, you know, without taking on their problems, you know, and I add that caveat. So empaths also love nature. Um, they may love one-to-one -one contact. You're going to tea for a friend rather than going to a Rolling Stones concert and a great, you know, forum, you know, because that's way too much energy for them. And it's exhausting for empaths often to be in large groups of people because they pick up other people's emotions, which when you're put together like that with 10,000 people, you're going to be feeling a lot, you know, and so the, the gifts are creativity and intuition and being loving and connecting to nature, um, being a giver and always wanting to give and the challenge would be, you know, not becoming an unhealthy giver where you drain your own life's blood for other people. That's codependent giving, which I go into the difference between healthy giving and codependent giving. But giving can wear you out and make you sick if you overgive. And you have to learn how to say no. And a lot of empaths are overly polite and they are afraid they're going to offend people if they say no or I'm not available right now. Empaths tend to be on call 24 hours a day for people, which is not a good practice in my opinion. No, you have to have alone time. Empaths need alone time to recharge themselves. They need to have a time without pressure and stress and just to be in their own little world and look out. You know, I'm a big starer at things. I stare out the window and look at the birds flying. And I look up at the sky and I don't want to interact. I just want to do that, you know, and you have to give yourself that. So you have to learn self-empathy, which there's a chapter on, and how to give yourself that time that you need. And when you do that, it's a, a beautiful thing and you become much less apt to absorb negativity into your own body. Hmm, this is really speaking to me. I love that um, I identify as a creative and intuitive. Um, one of the things you shared, and I knew a client asked me to ask you this question, actually, is a highly sensitive person an empath and vice versa? Or are they two different things or do they overlap? Yeah, there's a spectrum of empathy. Um, at the lowest end of the spectrum, zero empathy, empathy deficient disorder people, which there's a chapter on, uh, the narcissist, the sociopaths, and the psychopaths, they're not capable of feeling empathy. All right. So this is important for empaths and sensitive people to know. Not capable. You can't change them. You can't love them into feeling empathy. Won't, won't work. So anyways, at the bottom, you have those people. In the middle, you have people with everyday empathy, which is so beautiful. It's just, oh, I see you've gone through a hard time. Um, I hope it gets better for you. You know, I'm thinking of you. You know, just that kind of thing, which is so wonderful. I mean, a little, little help, a little pat on the back, you know, it's great. And then up a little higher in the spectrum where you have the high, highly sensitive people. And these are people with extremely acute sensitivities and they're able to, they love light and sound and um, touch, but it has to be modulated because they can get overloaded by sensory stimulation. And that's the key quality of a highly sensitive person aside from their you know, beautiful hearts and desire to give and be in nature. Um, so, one step higher on the spectrum is the empath. And the empath, unlike the highly sensitive person, um, tends to 
be an emotional sponge and absorb the the good, bad, and indifferent in, into their bodies. You know, they absorb everything. They just have this absorptive quality. And if you're an empath, you know what I'm talking about, where you could just be around somebody and talking to them, and suddenly you notice your energy just sinking and going down, and you're thinking, what's happening? And now this person looks perfectly fine. They're smiling. They're happy. Why am I feeling so drained around them? And it's just, you know, some maybe you're picking up something that they're not expressing at that time. Um, so you have to, you know, be aware of being an emotional sponge and really honor it. You could just sometimes I feel that way around somebody and I think, well, I don't know what it is, but it's not something I want to be around at the moment, you know, which is fine. You can you have to set limits and boundaries for yourself as opposed to people who you can be around and you could be as sponge like as you like who have big hearts and beautiful energy and are loving giving happy people and you just feel like hugging them you know as you feel like you're attracted and drawn to them those are mainly the people you want in your life if you could find them heart-centered people that's the most important quality in a friend to me in a partner heart-centered people you know are a gift from heaven they really are it's the most beautiful thing to have friends who are heart-centered. I love this. And it's so, so true. And something you said too reminds me way back years ago, I could walk into a place and not know why I felt so uncomfortable there. Uh -huh. And in like energetically, I didn't know a lot about energy back 30 something years ago. I just would say to my partner, I have got to leave. Or I would want my back against the wall. Like if we were at a restaurant or something. And then as I got to know how I process things around me, I realized I would take it on. If somebody was grumpy, I would feel it. If somebody was angry or sad, I would feel it like a, a, a little jolt in my heart. And now it's like I can have this protective bubble, feel them, but not bring it in to my energy where it can lower my energy. It's the best way I can describe it for myself. Yes, yes, exactly. You have to honor that. You have to honor your energetic responses to people. And let's say, you know, you're having too much empathy at the time for someone. Let's say they're going to a really hard time and you're getting sucked into the vortex. And you have to take responsibility and talk to yourself and say, all right, this isn't going to be healthy for me. I'm going to practice loving detachment, which is a skill I present in the book where you take a step backwards. You have empaths must learn to take one step backward to get a little distance, loving distance from someone so that you can respect the, the dignity of their path, whatever they're going through. It's not your path and it's none of your business to get involved with it. I say that respectfully and empaths don't know that, that it's none of their business. They think everything is their business. They can jump in and help everybody. And that's not a respectful thing to do. No, and I, I really say that knowing the desire to want to help everyone yeah. and change everything. You know, I I really know that feeling, but it's not what we're meant to do. We're we're meant to help when we can and to also take care of ourselves. Um, and to be able to say, no, I can't do that at this point. You know, I have to go rest and be able to to send that message to people. It's okay not to be on call 100% of the time. It's okay to say, I'm too tired to give you what you need and deserve right now. I need to take care of myself. Well, you have to get used to that. You know? yeah, it, took, it took me a long time. I'm 62 now. That, took, that one took me a long time. Um, this is a beautiful segue to the commercial. When we come back, I want to talk about, um, I love your statement that empathy is a superpower. So I'm really curious. We'll be back in a moment, my friends. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm here with Dr. Judith Olaf. I invite you to grab a copy of her book, The Genius of Empathy. And of course, visit her website, drjuditholoff.com. We'll be right back. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. 
Are you ready to create and live the divinely guided life intended for you? A life not bound by your past or tied to a specific future. A life beyond your fears and what ifs that is filled with limitless possibilities. Experiencing an empowered life of fulfillment, joy and connection is possible when you embrace a spiritual solutions-centered lifestyle. Through her transformational teachings and programs, Lisa Hermata, empowered life view guide, life transformation mentor, and founder of Love is the Seed, empowers women to break the barriers holding them back from living their sacred truth so they can find greater connection with their inner wisdom and their divine source to co-create a life that brings peace, joy, and self-acceptance. Visit loveistheseed.com for positive guidance and valuable resources to support you in embracing an empowered life view. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. Hey, hon, what you doing with your phone? Taking pictures? No. I'm asking you questions. Like what? Hey, Bobo, do flowers have best friends? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, follow me. I want to show you something. Look, flowers do have best friends. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. Today we're talking all about empathy, the gifts and challenges of being an empath. And Judith, why do you say that empathy is a superpower? I've come to believe that, but I'd love just from learning from you over the years. What's your belief system on that? It has the power to heal ourselves, our relationships, and the world. It can shift us from war to peace. And I really feel that way. Um, I begin the book with a, a quote by Rumi, translated by Coleman Barks, without beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. Mm. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. And that's what we have to do with our spouses, with our loved ones, with our children, with our coworkers. Sometimes you can't be in the place of, I'm right about this. You have to go to a different place and start again, where it's a, the field of coming together. And empathy is a superpower because it brings us together in that field. You can't solve a problem on the problem's level. A lot of times you have to go to a different place and empathy can take you to this place. It's the place of the heart. And I feel very strongly that we're here on earth to learn this and to learn, to get our values straight and to really learn that love is the most important thing and that empathy is a kind of a, a servant of love or a sister, or mother, or father of love, a, you know, a, a companion to love. And that the more we can develop that in ourselves as we age and we eventually pass over, um, that is what we take with us. We don't take anything else. It's our development of the heart and of empathy. And the more, and it's a superpower because it's the healing energy. Empathy equals the healing energy equals love. And if you're ever lost or you don't know what way to go, just try to have empathy for yourself because it opens the heart chakra and that sets off the healing energy. So in the book, I focused on empathy as a healing force. I haven't seen that so much in the other empathy literature. You know, it's more empathic leadership, which I also talk about. But for those of you interested in healing, empathy is the superpower that can help heal you every day. And in fact, 
you know, they've done incredible scientific studies where they've shown when you witness an act of empathy, what that does, and then they've measured your saliva when you're witnessing the act of empathy, they've seen that your immune system starts opening up and expanding and that all of these anti-stress hormones come in. And so watching me being empathic with you, let's say one of your your listeners was watching me being empathic with you, it will help them too in terms of all these good things happening biochemically. So that's pretty amazing. This watching, uh, it's called the Mother Teresa effect, where you watch someone else do a beautiful act of empathy and your antibodies go up. Isn't that amazing if you just meditate on that and don't just go on to the next thing, but really get what that is, that you can make yourself better and heal yourself by being around a lot of empathy. Oh, I think we can all, um, in your sharing, we can all put ourselves in that moment where we actually experience that, right? That connection to either a story, maybe a commercial, something where we felt the exchange of energy between two people. I think that's beautiful. And I love that the science even shows it so that I don't need science to show me something. I, I get these knowings and feelings as truth, but I, I love that the science and spirituality blend on this topic so that those who need that can see how it all fits together. One right. of right. Yeah, I, because I believe we all learn differently. Some are more science-based. That's a blessing for them, right? And they need to receive information in the way that they process. And I need to, and I and others need to receive it in a way that we process. So I think it's beautiful that there's such a merging of the two. So one of the things you talk about in the book that empathy is a healing force to tap into. And you just shared a little about that, that as a superpower, we can heal ourselves, the our relationships in the world. And when you say tap into it, expand on that a little. Um, in the morning when you wake up, if you sit and you meditate and you put an inner request to feel empathy for yourself and everything you've been through, um, you know, let's say in the last day, let's, whatever you've been through, that you've been through a lot, you've been through some beautiful things you you know to be able to activate empathy in the heart it starts the healing energy flowing and you want that flowing and that gets everything balanced in your body you start out using empathy as a vehicle to balance your body through the energy of love okay and if you do this it's just like a a shot of positive energy you know, where you use empathy as the vehicle to increase the healing energy, the chi that's flowing in your body. So this is a good way to start the day. Or if you're going through something during the day, let's say it's hard. What I do is I, you know, if I'm driving, I pull, I live in LA, so we all have cars. So I pull over, I put my hand on my heart, you know, this is really hard. You know, this is going to take some centering. And I put my hand on my heart and I get my empathy flowing. And if you're having a difficult interaction with somebody and you want to have more empathy, but you're noticing that you're going in the opposite direction, you know, you, you have to take a pause and go off by yourself, put your hand on your heart, recenter yourself, then re-enter the situation. And I want to make the point that empathy is a superpower because it helps you um, have empathy for people you don't even like. You don't have to like someone to show empathy. All right, that's really important. If you don't have to like someone or agree with them, but you can have empathy for, you know, whatever they've been through. You know, let's say they're, they've had horrible abuse in their family, which has made them extremely rigid and judgmental. You know, and and that reflects in their values. Um, you can have empathy for that. You don't have to make them your best friend. You don't ever have to talk to them. Hopefully, you know, if you don't want to, but you go, wow, that person has really been hurt early on. You no, know, and and feel that 
And the reason that you want to do that, like, why would you exert that effort, right? Because it separates you from them. So you don't think about them. It create it doesn't create a, a bond of resentment and dislike. It, it frees you from ever thinking about them again. And it makes you feel good about the interaction, um, but not requesting that their beliefs or behavior change. You know, there's some people you just want to walk away from if you can, but you can do it in what I call the namaste reaction, where you can say, I don't necessarily like you, um, but I can respect the spirit within you and everything you've been through. Namaste. Uh, which is namaste is a greeting often in India where I respect the spirit within you. It's loosely translated. But as opposed to, no, that person is so horrible, you know, and going on a, a rant, <laughs> rant like people do, you know, about others, you know, just don't, it's not useful. It'll just keep you attached to them. And if you have a resentment, that means you're bound to them energetically, which you don't want. You don't want to hold on to the resentment. No, but sometimes with empathy you want to be authentic you know you want to if you're having you have a you're betrayed by somebody let's say um you're not going to find forgiveness right away that just doesn't happen right away it's something you can strive for it's something you can grow into but the first step of course is to be authentic with your emotions and you know, say, I feel so hurt. I feel this. I feel that. I can't stand that person. I'm so hurt by them. And, and to get in to that level, it's per you have to, you know, you have to. And then you have to be aware enough when that works its way through to go to another level in terms of trying to have empathy for whatever caused them to do such a horrible thing. And then to let it go which is the grace of forgiveness. There's a chapter on that. And it's the grace of forgiveness. You can't force it. So it, it's, you know, it's the, the tapestry of life and how to deal with life. This is what this book is about. It's about very practical solutions and what happens when you're in this situation or that situation. How do you find empathy? Why is it so hard? Why does it feel impossible? You know, and at times... You know, I, I just know there are a million good reasons not to have empathy in this world. A million good reasons. You can get people to agree with you, you know, but that's not the way to change things. Exactly. You know, you know what I mean? It's like, that's not going to, yeah, you could get a lot of people to agree with you, but it's not going to change anything. So, you know, maybe you can look at things in a bit of a, unfamiliar way with this book in terms of some behavior changes and energetic changes you'll be making as a result of, of the genius of empathy and bringing it into your life so beautiful i gotta tell you that's what i love and we're going to take our final break and we come back i want to talk about because what i really love about the book is what you said practical strategies right and we're going to be right back my friends I want to be sure that you grab a copy of The Genius of Empathy. It's available at bookstores everywhere, online and in bookstores. And learn more at Dr. Judith Orloff about everything else she is doing in the world. We'll be right back. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Your worth is not determined by the number on the scale. You are enough right now, exactly as you are. If you're like many midlife women, you've thought, if I could just reach my ideal weight, I'd be so much happier. What we're really craving is our own love and acceptance, and Sarah Haas is that guide for your journey. Sarah is a women's weight release expert and body love coach, and walks alongside midlife women ready to say yes to self-care, self-compassion, and body love so they can become the healthy, vibrant, and unapologetically confident women they're here to be. Her holistic approach integrates nutrition, body movement, and self-care to nurture body, mind, and spirit. Visit sarahaaswellness.com for supportive resources, programs, and more for midlife women ready to reclaim their health. Host your show on IOM-FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media. 
one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. This is Kathy Beal, host of Celestial Compass, featuring astrology you can use. Celestial Compass points you to what's going on in the sky and what you can do with it down here on Earth. We also explore fun, effective, and cosmic tools for navigating this adventure we call life. Join me the first and third Monday of the month at 5 p.m. Eastern Time for Celestial Compass. It's enlightening, entertaining, and empowering. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. With me today is Dr. Judith Orloff. And Judith, right before the break, we were talking, you were talking about that starting your day with that heart meditation. And one of the things I love about the book is you have empathy in action sections. Like I have one in front of me called Soothe Your Nervous System. And you guide us through it. Then there's another one, activating your healing power, meditation to connect with your heart. Like you give us practical tools to embody the teachings of the book. And for me, that's how I integrate things. I thought that was, that is so powerful to someone who learns my way. So would you like to uh, talk a little bit about some practical empathy techniques that, that you use or that you could guide our listeners to? In our last segment? Yes, absolutely. There's so many of them. You know, how do you have empathy with someone during an argument? You know, have you ever thought of that? Probably not. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but I think it's worthwhile to think about. If you're in an argument with your spouse or your partner, whoever, or somebody close to you, and you notice you're getting swept up into the argument. All right, you have to have an inner dialogue going on saying, is this the direction you want to go? Is this really what you want to be doing? <clears throat> and then have empathy for where they're coming from. Let's say you see they've had a terrible day. They're upset. They're dumping on you. Um, you could have empathy for that. And what that does is that softens your, your heart towards them. Um, you might want to set a boundary. But, you know, by saying, I'm sorry, I can't be around this level of anger, but I'll come back once you've worked it through. No, but to, to lead with empathy instead of doing the dance with them and arguing back and forth and then getting making it worse and then ultimatums and then walking out of the room. You don't want to can you don't want to do that as, as much as you can. You don't want to it's too uh, wearing on people and especially empaths. You know, I just speak for myself. It's very wearing to argue with someone. I do not like it. I do not get an adrenaline rush from it. I do not like it. And I, uh, empathy allows you, it's not spiritual bypassing or emotional bypassing, but it allows you to feel the hurt that's motivating their bad behavior, to take a step away from it and then uh, come back again. You know, or maybe just take a, a, a break for, an hour, an evening, a day, but then return to it in a better place. As if you're emotionally triggered, you don't want to be arguing with anybody because you're not coming from a centered place. And so part of empathy and removing the obstacles, chapter four is about removing the obstacles, is learning how to pinpoint your emotional triggers and how to heal them. That's really important as part of the healing path. Um, and so I know if I get too emotionally charged up by something, I ask myself, wow, that's interesting. What's causing that? You know, why, why am I so triggered when this person, um, you know, is controlling, you know, which that's one of my buttons is like, because I had a very controlling mother and it was, uh, but a button that I was trained to respond to in a negative way. <laughs> And so now if I, if I know, you know, that's, a, I just bring up that example for me, it could be anything for you, but now when it comes up, if somebody tries to control me and I don't like it, you know, I could say, you know, I'll give it some thought. Thanks. You know, someone makes a controlling comment, give it some thought. Thanks. As opposed to a whole bunch of other options I could, I could. Do. <laughs> yeah. I, I, so that's having empathy for myself. 
then it's having more empathy for them. You know, it just, you want to get out of the situation when you're triggered. And you can always say, I'll give it some thought. If somebody criticizes you, you know, if somebody suggests something you don't really want to do and it's none of their business, if they offer unsolicited advice, you say, thanks, I'll consider it. So that's coming from a, a non-reactive place. It's making a conscious choice not to get into it with them, not to do the dysfunctional dance with somebody. And that's where empathy can help you. As you, you know how to do that dysfunctional dance, whatever you learn from your family, you can repeat your entire lifetime. I mean, I've seen people do that, but you don't want to. You don't want to. And so I invite you to consider some of these practical techniques um, rather than just doing the same old, same old and alienating people and not getting the loving and understanding that you want. That's basically, this is the rule for life. What people want is they want to be seen, they want to be heard, they want to be appreciated. And this includes everyone you don't like. This is what they basically want. So if you could give them a little bit of that, I hear you, I'll think about it, and not be snippy or mean or retaliative. You know, just say, yeah, I'll really think about it. Um, and then back off and go away, go somewhere else. But if you if you do that, it's that's what they're they're wanting. That will calm them down. So if let's say you're in a work situation, so I have a chapter on work, you know, the way to shift the energy of a situation is to be able to say, I hear you. And without being reactive or squirmy or whatever signs you give to the person that you're just angry and uncomfortable and just say, I'll give it, I'll give it some thought. I hear you, you put a lot of uh, yourself into this and I'll, I'll give it some thought. And that's not being inauthentic. It really, no. it's no, it, it isn't. It's about um, kind of honoring a person who's just not that great of a person. You want to do that. And that's not, I'm not saying to bring any kind of abuse onto yourself, but it's a, way that will get you out of the conversation in a very gracious elegant way and the person will feel a little bit hurt at least and you can go your own way and do whatever it is you want as opposed to getting in a you know a big argument with them or pointing fingers so it's just an alternative for you to try and it isn't always natural because the ego wants to get into it with them. The ego wants to get into a big old argument, but the heart doesn't, you see? And so this book, Empathy as a Superpower, allows you to get into your heart space rather than letting your ego dominate you. And so it's making a choice of where you come from, but never being the victim, never letting people walk on you or being the doormat. That's not what I'm suggesting. This is the Zen approach to life. This is the heart centered. And I would imagine this is what the Dalai Lama does. I would imagine, you know, it's, he oh, just, cool. and who knows, but it's, you know, it's just, he gives off the giggles and the, the beautiful laughter and the peace of peace of mind and heart, you know, and that comes from a, a lifelong pattern of compassion you know you see people who have tried and lived with compassion and you see people who haven't and there's you just doesn't take too much to see the huge difference between them and so this book will give you an option of doing things differently and it will improve your life I guarantee you it may seem counterintuitive at first some of the things I suggest because the ego one you know does not want to begin by being right and it's just know that it won't, but, but being right isn't the, the key, you know, the being right. You sometimes do have to give up being right. And it's a beautiful gift to give someone. If I let you be right, you'll probably feel good, you know? And so if you don't have any charge on it, just let, let your nagging mother-in-law be right. Just say, you know, I think you have a point. And then look at her face. No, it's it's just a beautiful thing. I get a big charge out of it because I think 
that was such a beautiful strategy you just shared. You have shared so many nuggets of wisdom. And I want to invite everyone again to grab a copy of The Genius of Empathy, Practical Skills to Heal Your Sensitive Self, Your Relationships, and the World. You can get it everywhere, every online bookseller, bookstores. Judith's books are everywhere. I have all of them. And I'm going to tell you, don't just read it. Read it and then do the empathy and action section. Start to integrate it. It's what's changed my life. And Judith, I am so grateful that we got to circle up that with you're featured in Aspire Magazine's April May issue so we can get this message out there. Um, we all need to live from a heart a little bit more, my friend. So thank you. Thank you. You're so welcome. And I just want to say I'm giving a bunch of book tour events, some in person. And if you happen to be around Venice, California on April 13th, I'll be at Mystic Journeys Bookstore. So you're all invited. Oh, wonderful. And be sure to check out her website, um, drjudithorloff.com for updates on other locations that she may be speaking on, speaking right. at. So Judith, thank you again, my friend. Um, until next time, everyone, choose love, choose joy, choose happiness, my friends. Blessings. Thanks for listening to Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy. Join our sacred space every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and meet leading female visionaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome, along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired Conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living.